So to let David know I'm going to get started on this work, I'll put it in work. And then I'll head over to XShape. All right, so XShape. If you've never used subdivision modeling, then it is a completely different workflow from your typical CAD with parametric dimensions and history-based feature trees. Let's get started just by giving this a name. We'll call it our new handle concept. So I'm inserting a new component here into the assembly. And the first step, uh, just to kind of give myself a guide for this sub D model, I am going to insert a picture. So this is maybe something I have hand sketched ahead of time, um, making use of something I've already, you know, like a, like a napkin sketch. Um, I can use my on-screen points to adjust the scale of this image should be about 200 from those between those points. And I'm just going to put this in place so that it covers that new battery pack down here in our assembly. And this picture will serve as our guide as we design this new component. All right. So the subdivision modeling starts with a primitive shape, which is one of the shapes from this list. And this is just really the starting point. Um, it's not too important what shape you pick first, because you can always go in and make so many changes. And it's going to start changing shape really quickly here. But I'll start with a quad ball. All right. So I'm going to pull this side out. From here on out, it's really just a lot of picks and clicks but you'll notice it is completely different than what you might be expecting to see in SOLIDWORKS. I'm starting to make some uh, selectable faces and edges that are gonna help me later in my design for things that I'm really just pushing and pulling on like I'm modeling clay. So it's more, to, more of like an artistic workflow. Uh, maybe I'll delete a subdivision that's going horizontally there. All right, so that quad ball is now stretched out. We've got a different shape forming. I can crease some of these edges to remove the surface continuity. When I do that, it's going to leave behind these blue edges to let me know that those are no longer the same smooth, continuous surfaces that we are seeing everywhere else. I'll do that again on the top, just to a few of these faces. Um, actually, I will subdivide them further with a quick box select. I can subdivide them, meaning I'm inserting a new ring of faces in there. Okay, then I'll take those same smaller inside faces and crease those. Oops, got to get it all the way over here. All right. So I'm making use of different selection types. Um, and I also want to make use of symmetry on this model. So I can apply symmetry across the YZ plane. That's going to leave behind this green outline to let me know where the symmetry has been applied. All right, so we'll crease one more set of edges coming along the side. And these edges that I'm creasing are ultimately going to be kind of like the swooping artistic edges uh, dividing the faces on the side of our model. Okay. All right, so it's looking maybe not so much like a uh, ergonomic handle just yet, but we will definitely be getting there. All right, let me make a change. I think I need to start scaling down that size before I really go making the shape any more uh, ergonomic. Let's show the bounding box, and I can make a non-uniform scale of my bounding box just to reconstrain myself to my goal dimensions. All right, that's looking a little better. And then I'm gonna move this in place. I really want that left edge to be in line with the front plane where our image is really sitting. So kind of like that. All right. All right, so now comes the real magic of X design. I've done kind of some setup, creasing some edges, but I wanna show you the pushing and pulling that you get when you start selecting faces and dragging them with the triad. So I'll go around here and select some of these side faces. Change my triad to my X, Y, Z directions. And then I'll just start pushing this down and I'm gonna try to match up with those solid black lines on my guide image. And maybe I'll take this face and drag it up. And then we're just, it's just kind of a matter of 
pulling on my points and edges and everything until it starts to look like the product I had envisioned when I sketched it on a napkin. And again, this is pretty like revolutionary when you consider how long this may have taken if you were using standard surface modeling tools. For those of you who are familiar with surface lofts and boundaries and all those fun things, you might be thinking, wow, how long would this have taken me in SolidWorks? A long time. Yep. I had a feeling you were going to chime in there, John. <laughs> I know you're familiar. This represents probably three days of my life if I was doing it with straight up solid work, right? And getting it just right. Right. And it's a totally different workflow than entering those like parameters for every single feature. Right. Here, it's just, you know, you're glancing and seeing where you need to make changes. Um, all right, so I've noticed, you know, I creased these front faces so they're flat, but I want them to be planar so that when I look at them, they would be totally matched up with my front plane there. So I'll go ahead and highlight these guys and align them by a line. That will snap them all uh, to this straight line that I can move and scale and put that in place. Another type of alignment I can do, I'll quickly show you across the bottom here. We can do a line by uh, curve. And I'll just sketch sort of this loosely shaped curve there. All right, so you have to you have to really get in touch with your artistic side here to start making some of these crazy shapes. All right, I think it's time we add that finger grip on the bottom. I can add on kind of like adding on a hunk of clay. I can add an extrusion going to just take that face and extrude it with surrounding faces. Maybe I'll scale it down to make that end face a little smaller. Take it to the side and we're just doing some more tweaks. So we'll adjust the position of these edges. All right. And I could really keep going at this all day, but I'm pretty happy with where we are right now. All right. Uh, there's one more thing I want to do, and that's looking at this model from the top. I've been mostly working on that side face. So when I look at it from the top, the shape is still fairly consistent from left to right. Uh, to make this more ergonomic, I want to select loops that run around the model. And I'm going to shrink this loop in a little bit towards the front. And then I'll take this loop towards the back and scale that out. All right, and then I'll just give it a quick spin here. See if there's anything else I want to change. Actually, I'm pretty happy with this. All right, so I can exit out of my subdivision modeling environment. You'll notice that just adds one or two, uh, really two features to our tree, but it's not that uh, history-based feature manager you might be thinking of when you think of CAD and SOLIDWORKS. All right, I will save this design, and then my next task is to actually update our SOLIDWORKS assembly of the carving knife with this new shape.